Wow, I never expected to be giving Pencil Leopard a 100 on an Ultraman Kaiju test. Uh, oh, hello students! Just finishing grading some papers. Um, for some reason, some of my students dominated the most recent test I gave them when they usually do quite poorly. But I suppose that's off topic. Let's get to the monster we're covering today. Pig Brain from Choju Sentai Live Man, the 12th entry in the Super Sentai franchise. Since Live Man came prior to Zoo Ranger, the first Sentai season to be adapted into Power Rangers, Pig Brain is one of the many monsters most MMPR viewers are missing out on. But to tell the truth, I doubt that even the majority of diehard Super Sentai fans remember this brain beast very well, considering the sheer amount of other kaijin of the week that exist. But if there's one thing that tickles me more than telling bad puns, it's giving seemingly completely random and forgettable monsters a much-deserved moment in the spotlight. So let's see if we can awaken a love for this undeservedly overlooked swine in this, my comprehensive pig brain bio. Time to pork chop to it! Ah, uh, how delightfully punny. Okay, as always, let's begin with some behind the scenes info. There isn't too much I was able to dig up about Pig Brain's real life origins, but I did find his concept art, which seems a bit more vibrantly colored than his finished look. Otherwise, it seems that the pig snout covered design was followed pretty closely. I'm not completely sure who is responsible for this particular piece of art, but I believe it is one of these individuals. Assuming the writer of Pig Brain's debut episode was the one who dreamed the swine creature up, it seems that Kunio Fuji, who worked on Super Sentai screenplays from Bioman through Kaku Ranger, was the one who came up with the idea for the kaijin. Shohei Tojo, who seemingly got involved in Tokusatsu Productions all the way back in the mid-60s working on Ultra Q, was the director of Pig Brain's debut episode. As with most Super Sentai monsters, starting with Sun Vulcan, it appears that Nori Meizawa's company, Rainbow Zoke, modeled the costume, and Toku Nishio, who you may remember from my Doguma Roguma video, provided Pig Brain's voice. I still can't get over how perfect this guy's given name was for the job he had. Speaking of names, I've been calling this monster Pig Brain, but that's actually a translation of his real name, Buta Zuno. Buta means pig, and Zuno seems to come from Zunoju, meaning brain beast. Alright, time to get into episode 24 of Choju Sentai Live Man and follow the in-universe adventures of Pig Brain. For this episode, the Armed Brain Army Volt developed a highly unusual evil plot to cause human kids to become incredibly lazy and lethargic in order to make them their slaves, by turning them into pigs, thanks to the signature ability of Pig Brain, a brain beast capable of emitting weird beams of light from his snout which could exploit the weakness of a child's heart. Working with Dr. Mazenda, who convinced several children to take part in his evil therapy in order to get better at studying and made them put on these odd shades, Pig Brain began experimenting with his powers. At first, the kids became fantastic at solving problems, while hardly needing to study at all, and they kept coming back for more exposure to Pig Brain's energy rays. One of their classmates, however, who was friends with one of the live men and wasn't receiving pig brain therapy, began complaining how much better his fellow students were doing to the live men one day. Upon hearing that a mysterious lady was helping his classmates, the Super Sentai team decided to investigate, and discovered Mazinda and Pig Brain, the latter of whom fired a blast of steam from his nose to knock the trio back before they could transform. Now that's what I call a pig brain play. A bunch of Jimmers arrived to take the heroes on as well, so the team transformed into the Live Men and fought back. This battle didn't last for long at all, and after knocking Red Falcon to the ground, Pig Brain escaped with Mazinda. Not much later, the kids Pig Brain had been using as guinea, well, pigs, began to experience the horrifying effects of the treatment they'd been receiving. Their faces began to resemble that of a pig, and they became extremely lazy. Some were even hospitalized. Things were going according to plan for Pig Brain, but for some reason he and Mazinda made the ridiculous decision to continue giving children treatment, seemingly in the exact same classroom where the live men had located them earlier. The red live man, Yusuke, was able to save his friend from Volt's clutches, and soon Pig Brain returned for a rematch. He and Red Falcon engaged in a violent physical brawl, and then the Kaijin showed off a new technique, the Fire Boo. Boo is the Japanese version of Oink, by the way. The other live men arrived to help out, but Red Falcon insisted they keep out of it for now, so he could show his young friend the value of working hard and not being lazy. The Red Ranger had always wanted to score a goal in soccer with a backflip, and had been practicing all his life, without success. <clears throat> but somehow, he must have been convinced he was finally ready now, and the next time Pig Brain unleashed his fire boo attacks, Yusuke charged through the flames, leapt up, and deflected a fireball back, which exploded, knocking Pig Brain off of his feet, 
Having completed this move, the other live men were permitted to join the fray, and all three members transformed for the usual near the end of the episode confrontation with Volt. Pigbrain reused his steam attack and then performed a dashing charge, but was stopped dead in his tracks by the triple bazooka, and then the live men whipped out the biomotion buster. Move, Pigbrain, move! He didn't listen. The moment Pigbrain was destroyed, all the kids affected by his earlier treatment returned to normal, but there was still work to be done for the live men as Pigbrain was revived and enlarged. The live men quickly entered Live Robo to combat the big pig. In this, his final battle, the now enormous Kaijin tried to push Live Robo over and launched several more slightly effective fireballs, but after getting knocked off balance by a flying punch, things looked bad for the brain beast. And things were bad. The monster was walloped by Live Robo's Super Live Crash, and Pig Brain was annihilated, never to be seen again. You know what I think would be hilarious and exciting? If at some point the Toku community could band together in support of an obscure forgotten monster like Pig Brain and petition to have him brought back. Wouldn't that be amazing if it worked and he returned in King Oger or something? Or, almost just as good, if Toei had Bandai produce a figure of the Kaijin for collectors. I definitely want to buy one. It would take a lot of work, but maybe Pig Brain could be restored to his former glory. Well, if he ever had glory. Just a little something to think about as we wrap up this class. Alright, guess it's back to grading now. I still can't get over how well the kids have been doing on these te- Oh, wait a minute. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's find out. The uh, Toku Professor! Travel form activated! Go! 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 Aha! I knew it! Oh no! You kids have been undergoing pig brain treatment! Well, yeah. But how could we resist? They were offering free shades! Plus, being able to study quicker meant more time to play Godzilla Battle Line! Wait, not only have you been associating with pig brain, but you've been playing Godzilla Battle Line? Looks like I definitely need to adjust these grades. Oh no! Do we fail? What? No, you get extra credit! The activities you've been engaging in are exactly what Toku students should be doing more of! Wait, really? Awesome! Thanks for watching, everyone! Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment! Wait! Aren't you gonna do something about us being stuck with pig faces now? Not a problem. I'm sure episode inconsistency will take care of it. Bye, students!